In 2002, a group of people with disabilities from the greater Boston area fed up with the inaccessible, unsafe, and undignified public transit system filed a class action suit against the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. take me two hours virtually every day to get to work because buses wouldn't work, lifts on buses wouldn't work, elevators wouldn't work. I ride it every, you know, seven days a week if I have to go somewhere because I don't drive. I had just had my second accident on the MBTA where the bus driver had opened the doors I was hardly out the doors when he closed the doors on my hands and literally dragged me about a block. We will ride 10 years after the settlement. We're celebrating the 10 year anniversary, but this case started way before. In the early 90s, I began working with a group in the Dorchester Roxbury neighborhood and Jamaica Plain neighborhood, just representing them on a variety of issues. No matter what the topic was, people wanted to talk about public transportation. People wanted to talk about why it is they couldn't get there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, bus. Yes. Albany yes. bus. Yeah. Albany, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we said this got to be a better way to bring this situation to a better life for disabled people. I would call the bulk of them advocates, community advocates. They knew their rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act. They knew they had a right to readily accessible, usable, safe public transportation. The whole issue was making the system better to get from point A to point B without all that obstacles, without fear of falling. And we filed the lawsuit in 2002. GBLS didn't have any transportation experience. We have a lot of experience litigating against state agencies and government agencies. But it was a hostile relationship. They were really angry that we sued them. I had very little experience with uh, what it was like for the person with a disability to have to navigate the MBTA. Uh, and I think that was true probably of most T employees and management. When we started with the MBTA, they didn't even want to meet with us. We had people who said at the MBTA, oh, people with disabilities can crawl up the stairs if the elevator isn't working. Our clients wanted 100% access, and that is what we set out to do. The judge had asked the plaintiffs and their lawyers, if you got everything you wanted out of the MBTA, what would it be? I asked our lawyers to let me see it. I couldn't find anything in there that I didn't think that they were owed by right of law or just doing the right thing to provide accessibility. My own lawyers said, you should know that they're not asking for any money for the individual plaintiffs or for the members of the class. Whatever they get us to agree to at the MBTA, they just want us to spend the money to fix it so they can use the system. Accessibility means to me that everyone can ride our system. Everybody's able to use the system, regardless of if they have a disability, they don't have a disability. Accessibility is the only civil right that actually costs money. And there is always this perception that We can't afford that to why. I think once people started to become aware, they realized, well, this system needs to change in a lot of ways. Instead of an us, them, we, they dialogue, it's us. What they began to see was the plaintiffs really knew what they were talking about and could be a real help. The the theme of the settlement was to expand accessibility to our system. There was a specific list of items that, as part of the settlement, we were to institute within a period of time. 
were pretty far along in getting most of those done. But the theme was to expand accessibility to our throughout our system. When the MBT had a trainings and they were putting a, out a new bus design, they invited the entire plaintiff's group and Judge King to come and look at these buses. So now, instead of, we are going to give you a plan and show you what we're doing, we are invited into the heart of the MBTA to give our input. The name plaintiff group has participated in everything from revamping bus rules and train rules for the motor people and, and drivers to bus training and work with vehicle design and engineering. When I signed the settlement agreement in April of 2000, I signed it saying, this is going to tie me to the T for the rest of my life. There's always going to be room for improvement. And yeah. I expected and wanted to be a participant in making the, the improvements that have been made. My ability to get to Boston and around Boston is much better. The elevators are working. Stations are somewhat more accessible. We have developed a amazing collaborative effort with the MBTA. We have transformed this system by virtue of our uh, collaboration together. On Friday, I went to Washington, D.C., and um, I'm extremely unhappy with the metro system. Uh, the lighting was terrible. The path of travel was terrible. So it was just, it was a pretty bad experience. Uh, I'm pretty proud of what we have here. One big thing that's changed within the organization is that um, we've got a number of employees with disabilities making decisions often on behalf of people with disabilities which is something that unfortunately had not been occurring here. Remember, it was a culture of rude bus drivers, horrible service, people with disabilities didn't matter. And then you see this change to, you matter, we're working with you, we see you, we hear you. One of the big things that have come out of this lawsuit, having an internal advocacy network for people with disabilities so that we can be represented, our needs can be represented to the MBTA. I conduct uh, every six months a public meeting where the plaintiffs, team management all get together. And team management has an opportunity to hear from the plaintiffs and other members of their community with regard to how the T is performing its services. People have really bought into the importance of this issue, in large part because they've seen what a difference it makes, not only for people with disabilities, but also the general ridership, and also our employees, too. Well, for the past 28 years I've been here at the MBTA, the changes that it's brought about have been absolutely huge. So many of our stops weren't accessible, they're now accessible. When anyone comes to Massachusetts, when anyone rides the MBTAs, what do they see? You hear audible stop announcements. You see the visual monitors telling you when your train or bus is coming. You um, actually get to know when your elevators are out. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but we've come light years. I'm hoping that the T is going to be at the forefront, it's going to be leading the country as far as that's concerned. Uh, we really need to be. The Boston case is now set a national standard and people do look to it. New York, Chicago, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Atlanta. Uh, we've been in touch with people everywhere and they want to learn from our experience. I think we're so still in the midst of it, but I have no doubt that 10 years from now or 20 years from now, we'll look back and just be blown away. It's gratifying to be able to participate in the improvements in the system, not just sitting around and watching them happen. Before it wasn't a priority for total access, and now is, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. I never thought things would change. And since the change in my situation, having the trains available, having the buses available, made my life complete. Well, overall, the investment in the stations and the systems have not only provided access to 
persons with disabilities, but have provided a better quality and better access to everybody using the system. Our signage is clearer, our stations have better paths of travel, our vehicles are in better condition, and mo more importantly, uh, we're putting that necessary investment into maintenance to make sure that these facilities stay up and are available most of the time. We've got a ways to go, but we've come a long ways as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we have a lot more new buses now. They're a lot more accessible. Yeah, we came a long way. There's a lot better training with the bus drivers and bus operations and how, and how, and, and how to deal with people with persons with disabilities. We're living longer than we have ever lived before. By the time you're age 65, over 50% of folks have a condition that impacts their daily life. Most of the time, it's an invisible condition. So when we actually start talking about civil rights, it's not about me. It's not about Laura or children. It's actually about everyone. While much progress has been made, the settlement agreement is still in its enforcement stage and the group continues to work towards 100% accessibility. This film is dedicated to named plaintiff Regera Robinson. If they strive to foster this understanding, to help those who need assistance and do what they can to treat disabled passengers with respect, the goal of this settlement will be achieved. This film was made possible by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, Greater Boston Legal Services, and the Boston Center for Independent Living.